Recording in progress. Welcome back to Matai Yahweh, the tribe of Judah. Um, most definitely, Thawada Yahweh for giving me the opportunity to present the Father's word, the Father's will, the Father's way, the Father's chosen people. Um, this is just a recap of tracing Judah, the royal bloodline of King David, the Negroes that the that the word speaks about. <clears throat> so, with previous um, yeah, with previous videos that I put up, I showed it. it the connection between Yahya El Negro being a direct descendant from King David. So now we're all the way up to the point to where we have the transition of or the slave trans the transatlantic slave trade is about to start. And then the expulsion of the Jews that were in that area or Hebrews that were in that area or Judeans. They could be considered Jews because they're they're of Judean. They're they're of Judah. Yahweh so with that being said let's make let's go ahead and start this because i want to you know i don't want to take up too much of your time um hopefully you'll take the time out to like share subscribe hit the bell notification for when i release new content and if you hit the share or and like um features on this video then it helps with the algorithm or it helps with the frequency of how many people are actually able to be um how many people are actually able to tune in or even see this particular video um, or in all of my videos most definitely and the number one thing is if you hit the like share and subscribe um, button or just to, if you already subscribed just hit the like and share and it's free it doesn't cost anything it just shows love and support but if you too much of a hater to show support then go ahead and dine and dash and then be about your way but at least you would be edified. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to go ahead and start here. All right. So it was a, it was known that the Jews were physically black. Portuguese Jews were black. Portuguese Jews were black. And this is coming from it. it, it this site. I'll leave a will I yeah I'll leave a link in the description just in case you want to go through it along with the they call it the pedigree of Yahya El Negro or Ibn Yahya Ahaya um, basically they call it his pedigree but it's his bloodline it's his heritage it's, it's individual humans that we're talking about not like some type of dog that you sell into slavery so anyway with that being said everything that i use on my video is all fair use is for educational purposes commentary or just for edific edific edifying individuals on certain situations that they may not know it's all for educational purposes fair use fair use fair use all right so now with that being said this is a source from shakespeare and the jews columbia university press 1996 AD and it reads race I knew you to be Jew, be a Jew I knew you to be a Jew for you Jews have peculiar color of face different from the form of and figure of other men which thing have often filled me with admiration you are black and uncommonly and not white as other men and that's from the insertion of the page 170 and then it goes on to further read the accumulation or the accumulated experience of over a hundred years of travel trade and conquest had convinced europeans that some of them some of the accepted stereotypes of jewish racial otherness including the belief that jews were black needed to be qualified when william Bur Burton jotted down his impression of the jews in the synagogue in amsterdam in 1635 he noted that the jews men are most black he noted that the jewish men are most black and insustainably, insustainably, 
given unto women drawing here a comp drawn here on contemporary prejudice linking blackness to listeniousness and when the Scottish minister Robert Kirk uh, toured London in January 1690 he also paid a visit to the synagogue there where he observed over 200 Jews worshipping he noted he noted in his journal that they were all they were all black men he noted in his journal that they were all all they were all very black men in the distinct in their reasoning as gypsies so gypsies were black too but anyway by the end of the seventh century works like the english translations of frank frank Frankio's Maximilian missions, uh, a a new voyage to Italy, a new voyage to Italy, make clear that it is a vulgar area that the Jews are all black. It's a vulgar area that the Jews are all black. Thus, missions observes is only true of the Portuguese Jews. Is I'm gonna go back and say that again. The missions observed is only, hold on, let's go back a little bit further. Let's go, by the end of the 7th century, works like the English translation of Franco's, Franco's Maximilian Missions, A New Voyage to Italy, make clear that it is a vulgar error area, area that the Jews are all black. Thus, missions observed is only true of the Portuguese Jews. Who marry along? Who who marry always? Who's who marrying always among one another? Beget children. Beget children like themselves. Consequently, consequently, the uh, swarthiness of their complexion is entailed upon the whole race. The swarthiness, the swarthiness of their complexion is entailed upon their whole race even in the northern regions but the jews who are originally of germany those for example i have seen at portugal are not blacker than the rest of their countrymen even manasseh manasseh ben israel in his plea for the redemption or the re readministering minute readministering readmissions of the jews into england the re like inserting the jews back into england often or offered evidence that some of the jews in the distinct lands were racially were different were deferred some of the jews in distant lands differed racially in his and then that's the end of that assertion then you go to another assertion. It's clear, and I'm, I mean, it's this Basalathia. Please forgive me. Um, therefore, I mean, I'm reading this, and if you're saying it blurry, it's blurry to me as well. But I'm just making just do. An Anglo Jewish historian, there is certainly enough evidence in the Jew Bill controversy, uh, controversy of the crudest sort of racial prejudice for example the idea that jews were black skinned surfaced in the the fascist or oh, fascist preface to some consideration on the naturalism of the jews were i mean where the author jokingly suggests to those of his English readers who might want to appear Jewish should in order to bring the skin to a lively complexion like that of the of a new Negro from the from the coast of Guinea take the peeling of walnuts and carefully rub the flesh night and morning for three weeks together afterwards rub yourself with a flesh brush 
and it will make it shine exactly like the black of an older based the black of a the it will all right it will make it shine exactly like the back of an old base vial and will fix such an indeliable indeliable hue or in the, uh, such an it will fix such an uh, indeliable hue that will not come off in six weeks with all of the water and soap you can use to it um and this in order to make your complexion olive beauty's charge of jewish ritual murder re reappealed as well okay then it's going into something else all right so with this right here it's letting you know that the the portuguese jews especially when i got to this reading right here Consequently, the swarthiness of their complexion is entailed upon their whole race, even in the northern regions. All right, and then basically we'll go here. When he says that Maximus says, or Mission says, a new voyage to Italy in his book, a new vo a new voyage to Italy make clear that it is a vulgar error that the jews are all black this mission is observed is only true of the portuguese jews yaya el negro or yaya ben el yaya of the son of king david descendants from the son of king david all right so now we're going to go ahead and bounce to another site all right now King Alfonso of the second of I mean the first of Portugal entrusted Yahya Yahya Ben Yaha the third with the post of supervi uh, supervisor of tax collections and nominated him the first chief rabbi of Portugal okay and then when we look at this particular individual let's look at his name this is on Wikipedia so i won't say that you could google that for you. you could google everything that i'm showing there's proof out there thousands of tons of proof all right yahaya ben yah yaha the third also known as yahaya negro ibn yaish was a sephardic jew born in cordoba yaish was a former was a jew born in cordoba um then it goes on to read also known as Yayana Yaya Hanasi Yaya Ibn Yaish or Dom Yahaya or Don Yahaya O Negro the son of Yahaya Ben Rabbi and said to be a direct descendant of the exilarchs of Babylon okay so then therefore that during these particular times these yaya's bloodline did exist then there's no denying that they were labeled negro and it's most definitely i haven't seen too many white people called negro but anyway we're going not unless you're just being sarcastic and want to call them whatever you want to call them but uh, i'll be good anyway now this is what i was mentioning earlier it goes into yahaya Ha Nasi, aka Don Yahaya, El Negro, Ibn Yaish, aka Ibn, I mean Yahaya, Ben Rabbi, Ben Yahaya, Lord of Aldea, Dos Negros, eponymy of Yahya family, nickname derives from formerly Moorish est estates granted to him by King Alfonso of Portugal in recognition of his courage. He went to war for him. He did a lot for him and then became uh, degrad degradados and lancados, tax collectors and rounders up of, you know, um, Judah in order to put the, them back or to put them into slavery. All right, so then you go through 
the different like i said this is the whole bloodline or this is the bloodline of yaya ha nasi el negro all right so now we're gonna go here yaya a uh, yahaya ben yaha the third also known as yahaya negro i ben yaish was a sephardic jew was a sephardic jew a sephardic jew of portugal or spain or portugal and spain i, I, I could just read it a sephardic jew sephardic or hispanic jews are jews jewish diaspora populations associated with the liberian peninsula the term which is derived from the hebrew sephardic can also let me move it up a little bit uh can also refer to Mazarian Mazarian jews and western asian um and north african uh jews or individuals or black individuals negroes all right, so now we're going to go ahead and go to right here. Like I said before, I want to die, die again. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I just wanted to go through and just do a recap and show how the, the bloodline of King David finally ended up in slavery through the transatlantic slave trades. Yaya El, El, Yaya, Yaya El Negro or Yahya Ben Yaha the third which is a descendant of yaya el negro and basically was uh was of ethnic ethnic descent and they were considered to be sephardic jews a negro that's a sephardic jew okay so now we're gonna go ahead and i'm gonna just close this out with this last piece of um information that i'm gonna share with you thawara most again most Def definitely most definitely thought without for tuning in if you have any comments please leave them in the comment section down below i'll respond to them if i see them and when when i see them um please be respectful to me and i'll be respectful to you and won't block you or won't yeah yeah it won't it won't escalate past that uh, please have respect for the father's word the father's chosen people if you bless us then ye shall be blessed if you curse us then ye shall be cursed if you know the word, then you know the words that I'm sharing with you right now. They are true. Come out of denial. We are the children of Israel, of the bloodline of Yahweh, or the bloodline of Judah. Matai Yahweh, the tribe of Judah. So, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close it out with this. Give me a second. Most definitely love you for tuning in. Mm, stay peace, prayed up, and all. Um, and like i said before if you have any comments please leave them take the time to like share subscribe don't hate don't want or eat and dine and then dash up out of it you know like yeah i know a little bit more thanks to him but leave no credits on the table all right so most definitely it helps out with the frequency i don't get anything personally no super chat donations no none of that basically i'm doing this for out of my free will for the love of, and fear of my father and i believe you should do the same so now i'm gonna go ahead and leave it out with this right here um salathia give me a minute to set up the sound Shalom alaikum, from Mishpacha. Peace be him. Okay, we're going to go over the book, The Untold Story, Revised Edition, and this is written by Edgar Shaw. Uh, we're going to start with the, the first subtitle here. Okay, we're going to go over the book, 
the Untold Story Revised Edition, and this is written by Edgar Shaw. Uh, we're going to start with the the first subtitle here, and it's in the Untold Story Revised Edition, and this is written by Edgar. Okay, we're going to go over the book, the Untold Story Revised Edition, and this is written by Edgar Shaw. Uh, we're going to start with the the first subtitle here. And it's entitled, The Expulsion of the Jews from Spain and Portugal. You can kind of read through the uh, paragraph here. In the year AD 1492, January 2nd, the Moorish stronghold of Granada surrendered to the armies of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. For the first time since the year 711, all of Spain was in Christian hands. The decree to expel the Jews from Spain was signed on March 31st in one of the corridors of the great Alhambra the palace of the Moorish kings of Granada so this was this was signed in uh, one of the great palaces that these Moorish kings who previously had uh, ruled uh, in that land had built it says uh, the motive given for the expulsion of the Jews was that it was conceived that they corrupted the Moranos, which were basically the uh, Jews that converted to Christianity under the uh, This was done by privately encouraging them in disloyalty to Christ, or basically the uh, Jews that converted to Christianity under the during the time of the Inquisition. Uh, this was done by privately encouraging them in disloyalty to Christianity. The ultimatum given to the Jews elapsed or expired August 1st, 1492. Uh, Professor Alan H. Godby says that the last Jewish king was overruled in Ghana, terminated in 1492. So basically the uh, rulership of the Jews was terminated 1492 in Ghana. It says in order to satisfy Queen Isabella of Spain, King Manuel of Portugal declared a royal ordinance expelling the Jews and Moors from his country. This was nothing new for the Jews. Uh, if you read back into the scriptures, you'll uh, read that uh, the time, and there was a point in time in which uh, Claudius Caesar had expelled the Jews from Italy. So this was uh, this was done um, over and over in times in the past. Okay, it says the Jews who were expelled from Spain and Portugal were scattered. Of course, we, we read in Deuteronomy 28 and 64 that this was a prophecy that said they were scattered throughout the Mediterranean coast. It is estimated that, that they would be scattered throughout Spain and Portugal were scattered. Of course, we, we read in Deuteronomy 28 and 64 that this was a prophecy that they would be scattered throughout. So they were scattered throughout the Mediterranean coast. It is estimated that over 100,000 Jews departed from Spain and Portugal during the persecutions and expulsions. Some of these Jews went to northern and western Africa. These black Jews, so now he's telling you who they were. He's telling you that they're black Jews. This is the color, this is a description of what they look like. Uh, these black Jews would innocently go to African countries, most of all because of the less persecution, and they could semblance themselves easily among blacks. So they can basically uh, camouflage themselves amongst the other blacks in the African lands. R.H.M. Elves gives a vivid description of the Portuguese Jew. Baruch Spinoza, middle size, good features, skin somewhat black, black curly hair, long eyebrows of the same color. Said he was a descendant from the Portuguese Jews. Middle size, good features, skin somewhat black, black curly hair, long eyebrows, of the same color so that one might know by his looks that he was a descendant from the Portuguese Jews when the Jews were expelled from Spain about 100,000 entered Portugal so 100,000 these Jews from Spain entered into Portugal by the uh, admission of King John II uh, it says they were allowed to enter under the condition that they pay the poll tax with that sense that they would leave the country within eight months. So they had to pay a poll tax to get in, of course, uh, understanding that in eight months they would be, again, expelled from that land as well. 
Also at this time the king beholden himself to take the Jews wherever they desired at the completion of eight months. So the king promised that after eight months, I'll take you wherever you want. I'll, I'll set up ships so the ships can take you wherever you want to go. When the time elapsed, many Jews were stranded because the king did not provide enough ships in time. So the king didn't provide the ships uh, during the allotted time of eight months. May have came eight months, three months, eight, eight, maybe nine months, but they didn't come in time. Uh, as a result, all the black Jews who were left behind were deprived of their freedom and sold into slavery. Thus, fit in the prophecy that you would be sold into slavery by way of ships. Uh, during the reign of King John II, or actually Jao II, or John II, 700 black Hebrew children were ruthlessly taken away from their parents in Portugal. So this was, a, this was an abrupt takeover. They were just taking kids from their parents in Portugal and transporting to the island of San Tome off the west coast of Africa. This island is situated, its location is near Nigeria, Cameroon, and Gabon. Alan H. Godby says that the Portuguese founded the island of San Tome in 1471. The Portuguese were the first Europeans to establish themselves on the west coast, on the West African coast. They came from first they came first as merchants and secondly as conquerors and slavers. With the influx of ten thousand of black Jews from Spain and Portugal seeking refuge in Morocco received a great share. In Morocco they came first as merchants and secondly as conquerors and slavers. With the influx of ten thousand of black Jews from Spain and Portugal seeking refuge in African ports. Morocco received a great share. In Morocco, there was a revival of Moorish and Jewish science in all areas. So you can see that these black Jews were bringing in the sciences, whether it be alchemy, uh, periodic tables, things of that nature, um, physics, and all these types of sciences, uh, the knowledge of the, of the astronomies, things like that, the cosmos. All these things were being brought in by the Moorish and the Jewish uh, inhabitants that were coming into those lands of Morocco. Okay, says so the uh, Hebrew Academy in Fez, which is in Morocco, competed with the one in Karun, in Algeria. There was many debates and lectures between the sages and the scholars of these schools. El Dad, the Danite, a Hebrew from the Jewish kingdom of Ghana, visited, the, visited these schools in the ninth century. So many scholars were visiting these schools and um, they, were, they were able to uh, hear these debates by these learned men, whether sages or scholars of these schools. Okay. Okay, we're going to pick up where we left off. Still in the book, The Untold Story, Revised Edition by Edgar Shaw. And we're picking it up from the paragraph. Uh, it says the black Jews went to Portuguese colonial possessions in Western Africa, which were Guinea. San Tome Island, Senegal, Angola, and a few islands near the African coast. Throughout the persecutions in Portugal, thousands of Jews left the country. The Jews were leaving the country in such massive numbers that in 1499 and in 1531, the kings published a law forbidding the new Christians, which were the black Jews, from leaving Portugal without special permits. Cecil Roth wrote that Christian Jews immigrated, immigrating to the Portuguese colony of Angola in West Africa were agents of the Inquisition and were sent to ferret them out in 1612. So this basically means that uh, there were the Christian Jews that had converted to, to the uh, uh, Caucasian way of Christianity were sent as agents of the Inquisition to basically bring back those black Jews in so that means that uh, there were the Christian Jews that had converted to, to the um, uh, Caucasian way of Christianity were sent as agents of the Inquisition to basically bring back those black Jews in those lands of Angola and those southern African lands. It says, it is certain that many black Jews of Portugal, San Tome, and Angola who became victims of the Inquisition 
and Portuguese persecutions were sold into the slave trade. This Atlantic slave trade lasted more than four of those southern African lands. It says, it is certain that many black Jews of Portugal, San Tome, and Angola, who became victims of the Inquisition and Portuguese persecutions, were sold into the slave trade. This Atlantic slave trade led to the slave trade. This Atlantic Tome and Angola, who became victims of the Inquisition and Portuguese persecutions, were sold into the slave trade. This Atlantic slave trade lasted more than 400 years from 1444 to about 1880 in various parts of South America. Some scholars did more than 400 years or to about 1880 in various parts of South America position and Portuguese persecutions were sold into the slave trade. This Atlantic slave trade lasted more than 400 years from 1444 to about 1880 in various parts of South America. Some scholars have located black Jews within the whole Ni uh, Niger River bend the Kaidi, in various parts of South America. Some scholars have located black Jews within the whole Ni uh, Niger River bend. The countries in this territory have contained black African Jews including the following Upper Volta, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Toga, Dahomey, and Nigeria. So in recap you had from the text is telling us that you had those Jews that had sold out to the the uh, Caucasian way of Christianity were acting as agents for the crown which was Ferdinand and Isabella and taking the true Jews the ones that were that were solid to the faith capturing these these Jews and ordered captured and sent into slavery faith capturing these these Jews and thus having them deported captured and sent into slavery via the transatlantic slave trade so basically this was this is what was going on uh, many times we hear that uh, we sold our own people into slavery I guess according to the text that that's technically true you did have a great number of uh, Jews that were that were sellouts that uh, chose to take upon them the customs of the heathen rather than stay true to the faith. And this has always been the case when you read the history of our people, of uh, the Israelites in the past, whether it be the, uh, the Roman Empire or the Greek Empire, there was always a faction of Jews that had um, wanted to uh, join themselves into the heathen, so to speak. And this was the same situation uh, during these times as well, during the Middle Ages, uh, 1400, all the way up until the 1800s as well. So it looks like you had a, a great deal of uh, sellouts that had joined the Inquisition against their own people, uh, going into the lands of the Homi uh, Bend area, uh, Mali, Angola, uh, 1400, all the way up until the 1800s as well. So it looks like you had a uh, a great deal of uh, sellouts that had joined the Inquisition against their own people, uh, going into the lands of the Homi, uh, the Niger River uh, Bend area, uh, Mali, Angola, places like that, and ferreting out those true Jews who were true to the faith, and uh, consequently having them, having these families uh, sold into slavery. joined themselves into the heathen, so to speak. And this was the same situation uh, during these times as well, during the Middle Ages, uh, 1400, all the way up until the 1800s as well. So it looks like you had a, a great deal of uh, sellouts that had joined the Inquisition against their own people, uh, going into the lands of the Homi, uh, the Niger River uh, Bend area, uh, Mali, Angola, places like that, and ferreting out those true Jews who were true to the faith, and uh, consequently having them have 
Hold it into. Joseph Dupi Dupius, concerning the Jews in 1824, says, The land occupied by these people covers a wide extent between Masa and Kaaba. Uh, Masana, Masana is located in southern Mali, inside the Niger River behind Oa Bend, inside the Niger River Bend, and Kaaba is found in the southern part of the Ivory Coast. The black Jews of Dahomey, Dr. J. Krepler reported in 1926 were a large Hebrew community of black Jews in the interior of Dahomey, West Africa. These Hebrews had their own central temple where they sacrificed animals in their temple are found many laws engraved on tablets which are attached to the temple walls. They have a high priest with a large number of priestly families whose members walk from house to house rendering educational and religious instructions to each family of the community. Stay blessed. Stay prayed up. Come back to Yahuwah. Tawara Yahuwah Bahashem Hamashiach Yahusha Uvem Barakata Rak Kurashaka Shalom Alaikum Meshpaka Stay blessed